This is Lewis Arthur, Boxing Social in association with Empire Fight Store. Always good to see Billy Nelson here on a nice Wednesday afternoon. Um, yeah, busy, busy times in boxing before the year closes out. Um, other than that, how was things, mate? Has it been too long since we last caught up? Um, it's uh, very, very busy in the gym just now. Uh, I think I've got about another six, six or seven fights between now and the end of the year. And then I've got an extremely, as it's sitting, an extremely busy uh, first few months of next year. Really busy. Well, at the at you know at the very highest level of sports. So yeah. hopefully, hopefully, good things come out. Absolutely for sure. Um, I guess yeah, you know, jump straight into it. As you say, you've got a busy sort of start, a busy end to the year, but a busy start to the year. Um, I guess one thing I did want to ask you about, I know Frank Smith went on and he'd done an interview with October Red and talked about sort of the possibility of Lewis, uh, Lewis Crocker fighting Paddy Donovan that it looks really, really likely now. Um, I guess from yourself, um, chances are, are very true that that, could, that is ideally next for both fighters? Well, I hope it is because uh, Lewis hasn't fought now since June and the quicker we get him out, the better because he's he's a fighter and he wants to earn a, a, a good living at this sport before he has to hang the gloves up. So being out, and that's four months now, he's about to ring, I think. That's too long, in my opinion. But there's a big, big fight, and they're going to get announced for him shortly. So I guess now, we'll see. Yeah, go on, go on, sorry. No, I don't even, I don't even. Yeah, well, I was going to say, it must be, I guess it must be exciting times for Lewis now because it is just edging closer and closer to a potential world title fight, um, which is obviously massive for yourself. So, um, important that now that it, you know, it, it, through Lewis, it's always serious, but more than ever now with, with how close he is to world honours. Well, he's one step away from fighting for a world title, as is Martin Bacoli. Uh, so, basically, you can say that both their next fights could be final eliminators for world titles. So, for 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 a, a wee jump up in Scotland to to achieve that at welterweight and heavyweight. I think it's a good achievement. And and just with, with most people talk, talking about the Paddy Donovan fight, is it is it does it make it? I guess something. It's a big fight anyway, but it must make it better in an, in a, I guess an all Irish clash in a sense. Like obviously uh, Lewis being from Northern Ireland, and Paddy being from sort of the Southern area of Ireland, but that does that sort of adds to the spice of it. Nah, well, I'm not involved in all that Irish stuff. You know, what I mean, Northern, Northern mm-hmm. Ireland, Southern Ireland. Yeah. I'm interested in Lewis Crocker, and I don't believe there's anybody in Ireland. Northern or Southern will touch him and I'll be proved right when they fight. Definitely. Um, as for uh, Martin Bacoli, obviously, I know he got ordered for the IBF in a minute with Ajit Caballero. I know we spoke about that um, sort of a couple of weeks ago now, but is there any guess, any sort of advances or any updates on that? Well, there has been negotiations with the, with the Caballero team and I think an offer has been made or is it imminent to be made? Okay, nice. But I know, and I know you sort of been a bit vocal on Twitter about it. But if potentially the the AJ sort of Dubois rematch is next, um, is there some frustration on the part? Because I know that it's obviously for an IBF eliminator and say Martin wins that, you don't want to be held up or anything like that. Is there any gets worries that the AJ would be getting a straight shot at the IBF title, considering obviously Dubois beat him the last Dubois beat him previously? Well, you've got to ask the IBF that. You know, the IBF have got rules that stay. I, I'm led to believe anyway that. Uh, nobody can fight for a world title coming off a defeat. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, and uh, and that's assuming that AJ lost again to Daniel, and that's assuming after they fight again. Yeah. So there, there could be multiple things that happen. You know, I think uh, I think uh, all we've got to concentrate on is doing a number on KBL, which I'm very very confident they will do. And uh, we can then look forward to a world title fight. If AJ and Daniel were to fight again, we fight the winner. Yeah. Or if or if Daniel fights somebody else and AJ then tries to sneak in the back where he can because we've we've got a final we can and a voluntary as long as he gets a win in between times. Mm-hmm. But you know. I think I think other other organisations are going to call for the Manchester as well after the the, the Fury basic fight. So yeah. we, we we could be in a we could be in a 
we could be getting called for IBF, we could get called for the WBA, because he's he's one, two, and three. He's, he's one in IBF. No, he's one in the WBA. He's two in the IBF and three in the other two organisations. He deserves a shot at the world title. That's yeah. the bottom line, isn't it, really? Let's be perfectly yeah. honest. See how these rematches on rematches. It's a lot of shite. Mm -hmm. And 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 if no disrespect, you know, and I'm only talking for for me, my my personal point of view, no anybody else's. If you get a voluntary shot at the champion and lose, how the hell have you got a rematch, supposedly a rematch clause? to fight that champion again. And who sanctioned that? Who's allowed that to happen? Yeah. That's totally... Uh, it's inappropriate and it's unfair. I guess that you could just say that's the, that's the privilege that AJ, someone like AJ would have. Why should you have a privilege? Why should you what? have a privilege? He's got a rematch clause in the Andy Ruiz fight. He's got a rematch clause in the Usyk fight. And now he's got a rematch clause in the Daniel Debo fight. It's allegedly a rematch clause. Mm -hmm. Is that fair? What if you what if you what if you were number one or number two in the organization and and kept getting rematches, rematches, rematches? You're sitting in your fingers doing nothing. No end on the penny yeah. for your family. Is that fair? Do you think that's fair? No, 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 of course of course not. But I would say like if I was finding a reason for it, I'd say the 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 Matram and, and Hearn are gonna they're gonna look after their guy. So whether it be AJ sort of with with the that, that's just the that's the only thing. Like when it comes to sort well, of things here's, like here's AJ. The scenario. Would... Martin Bacoli wins the world title and AJ is sitting uh, mandatory. And we give Louis Hart a, <laughs> a, a, volunt a voluntary defence of the world title. But we want a, but we've put a rematch clause in it. Is Eddie Hearn and Anthony Joshua going to be happy about that? Nah, of course not. they're not. Because, yeah. because we're holding up the process. Mm. The best fighters need to fight the best fighters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, no, and, of course, and, of course. And, and, and Joshua is a magnificent fighter, right? Mm -hmm. But he lost his last fight, and not only did he lose, he lost in an emphatic manner to Daniel. So why why should you be given the privilege of fighting a rematch? That's just my opinion. Yeah, of course. Yeah, no, I guess it's more more something to ask uh, Eddie Hearn. But um, yeah, one more thought, one more guy I did want to actually ask about the gym with Luke Bibby. Um, I know he's obviously making some good progress um, himself. But yeah, happy with how things are going with Luke so far. Luke Bibby, Luke Bibby, the, the promoter should be knocking down my door. He's saying this boy. He's uh, he's six and zero. He's got his seventh fight next Friday. Yeah. And then he's he's having the rest of November off because we've got my title fight early part yeah. of next year. Oh, okay. Yeah, exciting so, time. He's, he's all good. Listen, consummate professional, this boy. He's got a, he's got a six-pack, 365 days a year at Sigmund. When he, <laughs> he takes his top <laughs> off and I'm doing like that. Yeah. <laughs> That's brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, um, I just, just did just want to move on quickly, I guess, to wider topics in boxing. Um, There's a few things I did want to ask about, um, and it's been probably a story for about the last 10 days or so since it's happened, but obviously the situation... Ongoing with Ben Whitaker and Liam Cameron um, after the, the in, I guess the in, the injury suffered um, Ben suffered from falling over the ropes an ankle injury and I think he, Ben Shalom also spoke about him hurting his neck as well from when he fell. Um, I just wanted to sort of get your thoughts on it because obviously there's a lot of claims of people saying you know he quit or he you know he sort of looked for a way out. Like how how do you I guess see it? People who have never thought to say he quit or people listen see the bottom line is Louis right. See, see, I know Ben Whitaker personally. I know him not particularly well, but I know him to say a lot. Liam Cameron yeah. has been up at, up at my gym and, and a nicer guy you couldn't meet. So this isn't one way or the other. This is just my interpretation of what happened that night. What happened, and people are tend to forget this, Liam Cameron held on to uh, uh, Ben and walked him back like a good professional should, try and draw the strength out and walk him back. Unfortunately, the ropes were slack, yeah. right? Or slacker than what they should have been. And both had the misfortune of jumping, uh, falling out of the ring, resulting in an injury for, for uh, Ben Whitaker. Okay? Whether it was his ankle, his, his neck, whatever, whatever the case may be, that wasn't Ben Whitaker's fault. 
that was because the the the, the ropes were slightly slack mm-hmm. and Liam Cameron kept walking them back. Yeah, that fight should have been a no contest. Mm-hmm. That's what the the commentators Im- implied immediately after it happened, and then it slowly but surely kind of they kind of changed their mind to oh this might this might be going to points. They would have got they, they would have got word around side. This is going to points. But it shouldn't have went to points because it was an accident. Yeah. It was an accident due to no fault of the boxers. Yeah. It was because the ropes were slack. Mm-hmm. So that should have been a no contest. Mm-hmm. See all this quitting shite. What an answer. What, 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 what if the, the guy's injured? Yeah. Yeah, I was going like, like, to say that. Do you think that that's, I guess, people in general just want to... You know how it works in the UK. Whenever there's like a star and they get people up, the minute there is some adversity, they just do want to sort of tear him down. You see it so many times. Do you think that's more the case where when, so I guess, one person jumps on Whitaker and saying that everyone sort of followed that sort of trend? No, I, 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 well, listen, let's see the bottom line is, right? You don't need to go out and say, oh, he's quit. You know, uh, or I'll slag a guy off to, get, to try and get a rematch. That rematch will happen. Of yeah. that, I'm 100% sure. You know what I mean? A, a million percent sure because Ben Whitaker's a fighter and he wanted to re- uh, redeem himself with uh, know his best performance, shall we say. Mm-hmm. I'm a hundred percent sure that knowing Ben, that's what I'm sure he'll want to do. But you don't have to say, oh, he quit, he shit, he's selling blah, blah, blah to try and get a rematch. The rematch will happen. Yeah. Yeah. And and for, for, ben, for ben in general, because I think it's fair to say like, with the way the fight was going as well, I, I can think he could admit it probably weren't his best performance. And I think previously probably people have been concerned maybe from the, the Aaron Yanker fight before that and the Willings fight, um, where they previously not really seen much adversity, but he's had that in the last three fights. I guess, is there a, a potential sort of concern? Because there is expectations of him and it's, I guess it's a, a worry to see him sort of perform poorly to a level maybe he shouldn't be performing at. Oh, that, that's dope. He's, he's the team that he, he trains with it. And what he does in it, and it, I don't know. I'm no privy to what he does in the gym and how how his training goes, or who who trains and what how they do it. You know, yeah. I, I'm performing poorly on the night. I can I, I can't I can't I, I can't even be answerable to that unless I I trained him. Then I'm answerable to it. Yeah. So it's it was very unfair, you know. Yeah. He he'll know what was wrong. Yeah, definitely. He'll know what was wrong. One thing you actually mentioned there, you mentioned about the ropes, actually. Um, it's sort of the issue with the ropes. It was actually something Fraser Clark alert when, obviously, when fighters, before they do sort of step in the ring, they'll always have a move about, the sort of feel on the ropes. Fraser, I think Fra- the commentary mentioned that Fraser Clark was actually sort of leaning on the ropes and was sort of worried about it being a little bit, um, a little bit too loose. Right. So, yeah, a little bit. So, is that, I guess, that, then, then, then if, he, if he's reported that to uh, uh, a board official, that should have been reported to uh the people who, 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 who erected the, the ring and for them to tighten up the, the corner port, the you know, the, the bits at the corner yeah. to make the ropes tighter. But yeah. it's took it's took an incident like this before they get done, which is a shame. And you know, it's a shame for it's a shame for both fighters, because I'm sure neither fighter wanted to for it to end like certainly no Ben with an injury and certainly no Liam Cameron because he's he seemed to be coming into the fight. Yeah, so it's it's not it's not worked out for anybody concerned, mm-hmm. either the boxers or uh, the, the 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 board officials for not for not tightening them when when it was reported. Do you think do you think Whitaker now after that he as you you mentioned the rematch now he has a bigger point to prove than any than any like the point to prove is I guess to show that like, like he he's got a target on his back and there's a lot of criticism. So do you think more than ever now he's got a point to prove? Well, listen, of course he has, but, you know, I, I hope they get a rematch. I hope they get a rematch because Liam Cameron's also a friend of mine mm-hmm. and I'd love yeah. to see him earn buckets of money because what 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 happened to him in his career was a shocker. Yeah. Absolute shocking. Mm-hmm. Four years, his he's, he's prime years got took away from him. You know what I mean? For for someone that wasn't performance, performance enhancing, uh, he deserves a he deserves he deserves something out of the game now, doesn't he? Hundred percent, hundred percent. I agree. And what he's came back from for the issues that he's had, I can tell you something, right? At Liam Cameron's one Jeremy guy, he's a cracker, a brilliant guy. But so is Ben Whitaker. So 
and, and I'm not taking sides. I'm just yeah. telling you what I, how I seen that incident happen. Mm-hmm. Liam yeah. was walking him back. Neither was letting go, and the ropes just, they just went over the ropes. Mm-hmm. But I, so an accident happened through no fault of the two fought, fighters. Yeah. So it should be a no contest, shouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. I guess when you look at it like that, I, I probably agree with you. Um, but yeah, well, you can't even look at it. You yeah, can't even look yeah. at it any other. No, way. of course, yeah, that's of course, what yeah. That, yeah, no, no, that's what's happened. It's an accident. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I did want to did want to quickly just move on and actually get your thoughts on on another fight. Obviously, we were talking about the heavyweight division earlier and talking about rematches, but there's a rematch in December time. Alexander Usyk and Tyson Fury they actually square off on a press conference later on today. Um, yeah, how would you look at this rematch? Um, where obviously Usyk um, had a lot of success in the first fight, but how do you look at it in the, uh, for the rematch? But so did Tyson Fury. Tyson yeah, Fury of course, yeah. Of, but it needs to be more consistent. Mm-hmm. You know, but I, I wasn't aware that he only spared a, a few rounds leading up to that first fight, which wouldn't have helped. Not for somebody as, as, as clever and as, as sharp as, as Usyk, because he's eye injury, because the, you know, the, the stitches hadn't been long out. Uh, but I'm sure he'll have adequate swelling here. As, I, as, I've, as I've said to uh, his team, I think he should get Junior Macabu in. For me, he's a southpaw, same height, good mover, great job. He would be an excellent addition to this farm team. Yeah, definitely. But, you know, I, I said I said the first time I thought Fury would win, if Fury makes the adapt, uh, adapts correctly, I think he'll win. Yeah, but but for Usyk's side as well, where he now he's got this confidence that he knows he could like Usyk's always going to have the confidence, but but he knows he can hurt him, and he knows he's beat him, and he knows he can hurt him. Do you think that creates like a different sort of a different beast of Usyk that we might? Okay, no, because he's that good. Usyk's that good. He knows all he's got to do is repeat. Yeah, mm-hmm. press repeat and do what do what do what he does, and opportunities will arise because he's so good. Yeah. He's he's a, an extremely, extremely clever, calculated fighter. He just has to repeat. Yeah, very, very interesting. But Billy, as always, a pleasure to be speaking to you, mate. Always do appreciate taking the time to speak to me. Yeah, it means a lot, mate. Always good to get your, uh, your, your thoughts and your knowledge on all different things in boxing, mate. No appreciate it, mate. Top man. Take care. Thank you. Cheers.